the magic and mayhem of Donald Trump. Can we actually know what guides Trump's larger than life political persona? What really makes him tick? Joining me now to discuss her latest book, The Magic and Mayhem of Donald Trump, is author Gretchen Waller. Gretchen, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. So you're writing a book about Donald Trump. This man has had books written about him. He's written a couple of books himself. And so he's someone that we kind of know, but you're writing about an aspect of his personality that's rarely addressed, and that is what drives him. What did you find out? Well, um, it's more about, it's more than just uh, personality. The book is 10 chapters. And it it starts from it started back in 2016. In fact, this is a this is um, a strategic ex- excerpt of my first book, Born to Fight Lincoln and Trump, in which I compare Donald Trump to Abraham Lincoln. But I talk about where how he was raised. I talk about um, how he how he communicates where he learned his incredible focus, um, as well as the different things that make him completely real. We all know his flaws. In fact, a lot of the mayhem comes from his mouth, but a lot of the magic also comes from his mouth. Um, There are a lot of people out in the country today who really don't know the real Donald Trump, and they're wondering, they they see these visions of, uh, of just basically a facade. They either believe the left that say he deserves to be incarcerated forever for high crimes against society. And, um, but then there's other segments of America that say he's the savior and worthy of sainthood. Well, there's, there's a place in the middle and it has to do with, with, um, an ordinary guy who has so much in his past that has led him to his incredible resilience, his ability to fight, his ability to stand up and do what he does despite all of the dishonest uh, crap that is going against him, Um, and basically standing up for what's right in America. We are as divided as we were in 1860, prior to the Civil War. And uh, I think this this election is so incredibly significant to where America will be right after in November. We either will be the nation that Donald Trump is fighting for, uh, faith, family, and freedom, or we will be a socialist nation. It is, it is this election that is critical. And this book is to lead people to see there is a real person behind it. He has more virtues than he does flaws. And that's that's what I'm standing up to do. So I love the fact that you're talking about this from the historical perspective and framing him in that light, because I think it tones down some of the emotionally laden rhetoric that we see surrounding him, um, you know, that he's Hitler, that he's uh, you know going to destroy democracy, which we actually don't have in America. We have a republic. Um, We have a Republican form of government. It's a representative constitutional republic. It is not a democracy. And so when we hear people talking about him, um, I I often have to tell people who are talking to me about Trump, if, if the subject comes up, I have to say, would you please take a couple of deep breaths, slow yourself down for a moment, because I am not Donald Trump, because it's the mention of the name which drives them to immediately become very flustered, to breathe really fast, to uh, kind of take on an almost upset, uh, their affect, they become enraged, they're breathing hard, their thinking is completely disconnected, and then they just begin to hurl insults again and again and again. And I have to remind them, okay, first of all, you brought up Donald Trump. I am not Donald Trump. Nothing you say will change his behavior. Nothing you say to me will change Donald Trump's behavior. So if you want to talk about him, you have to first calm down because I, I can't I can't talk to you when you're this upset. They will actually say, oh, OK, you're right. You're right. I just you know, he's he's like Hitler. And then if you say what about him is like Hitler, they will stop for a second. They can't answer that. They just know that they've been told again and again and again that he's Hitler but they're not sure what it is. And so they'll say, well, I, I can't give examples like you can, but I just know he's dangerous and, we, and he has to be stopped. So there's no real meat there. It's just a couple of sound bites that they repeat again and again and again, and it makes them very viscerally upset. 
what you're talking about is history. History can be upsetting, but really it's a teaching tool. It is absolutely. And you know, so many people just don't understand and learn from history. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was absolutely regarded like Donald Trump is today. You either loved him or you hated him. And people don't really understand. They think they, they actually believe a facade in Abraham Lincoln as well. And my first book, I, I dove into this. And this, this is absolutely, if you want to learn about Abraham Lincoln, go to my first book, Born to Fight Lincoln and Trump. Um, but Abraham Lincoln was did not unify the nation until after he conquered the enemy. And the enemy was a Southern Democrat uh, entity which wanted a different kind of nation than what America was meant to be or what uh, the Union wanted to be. And so there was that fight, literally, physical war. And uh, But yeah, Abraham Lincoln was was hated and loved at the same time. Donald Trump is too because of the divide in our nation. There's very little in the middle. There's very little uh, that can connect us because it has entirely become political. And and politics is what is driving um, what happens in our daily lives. And so many people don't put those two things together, but they need to. Also, talking about history, as a historian, I see uh, the 18, the 1930s in Germany and whatever they were calling Donald Trump Hitler, yes, they're talking points and it all depends on where you get your news. I think so many people are so impressionable, but I know there are people out there who are just looking, please give me something that I can take that is Donald Trump that redeems him and allows me to vote for him, even though he just he just makes me cringe and and the magic and mayhem of Donald Trump will reveal who he is why he does what he does and that he is actually fighting for what's right he has a faith he has a depth of of character that you don't see in any of the media very little of it and that is what we have to do from now to the election because of course Harris is being completely hidden in what she really is. And if people were allowed to see those radical left ideas, they tend not to vote for them. But I think this is kind of like the Hunter laptop again. They want to hide her if they can keep her real self and her real policies hidden just past the election, uh, then they'll be they'll be okay. And we have to fight that. Gretchen, such a great point. I, I I love that you're highlighting this, which is this is this is why you wrote the book. This is why you're promoting the book because you've actually done the research there. And I I agree with you. Um, I have actually met President Trump a number of times, but I got a real clear picture of him uh, in an interview that he did on my radio program. He came on. We did not have an extended amount of time, and I chose instead of asking him about political topics to ask him about his wife, his children, his favorite thing to do. Um, his favorite food, a lot of, we, we did talk a little bit of policy, but we got into some of the hu more human aspects of who, who he is. And uh, we feel like we know a lot about him for people who aren't suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. You know, you there's lots of television that we could have watched back in the years when he was on NBC with The Apprentice and all the different versions of that program. You got to see some of his personality, but as he is right now in his later years, um, you know, still parenting a, a younger son, but most of his children are adults and He's in a different place than he was back then. He really is so much like other people we know in our lives. He's just extraordinary in that he was the president and he wants to be the president again. I love that you are humanizing an individual who deserves to be humanized. And personally, frankly, I find him delightful. I, I don't think he's horrible or mean. I know he's a little crude because he's a New Yorker, but this book is for sale wherever books are sold. It's on pre-order, The Magic and Mayhem of Donald Trump. It's a paperback issuing on August 13th, but I'm on Amazon. It says I can pre-order right now and have the book sent to me before it actually releases. It'll be on, on my doorstep on release day. Wherever books are sold, Gretchen, congratulations on the book. Best wishes. Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. All right. And up next, we have the National Association of Black Journalists, the leader of that group, quitting before Trump addresses her organization. I'll tell you more.